Hi, first grade. Today we're going to read a story called Over and Under the Pond. And this story is about a little boy and his mom who go in a boat. And the boy starts wondering, what's over and under the pond? He's really wondering what's under the pond that maybe he can't see. So I want you to really pay attention to the illustrations. That means the pictures in the story that help us see what's over and under the pond. And also pay attention to um, all the really great word choices that our author uses when they're sharing this story. So I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can see the story while I'm reading. Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. You can see their boat. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says? Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles, loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunch. The brook trout is that big fish over there. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three. They slip off and away, splish, Craggle, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. So those turtles went from over to under because they jumped in. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, cuckoree. Winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. So this is a really cool page. If you look at this page first grade, it's one page that has the over and the under right next to each other so you can see. And what's the same about them? They are both showing how someone is making their home. So a bird is making a nest and the larva is building a home. But one is over and one is under. One is light, one is darker. One has sunlight, one looks much more blue under there but they both have animals and they're both making their homes. So that's one of my favorite pages. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There's a branch, a new goldfish, a goldfinch teeters ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are charging, learning to hop. They're changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. A lot going on under the pond. A tadpole's going from a tadpole to a frog. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes! It catches the whirligig, quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding, under the pond. Over the pond, we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and minks stalk shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears into the dark. You can see the sun's going down. 
Over the pond we head for home. We glide, swish bump, right up onto the shore. As a far off loon calls good night, the sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turn frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. So there is a little bit about the animals on this page that we'll look at really quick. They talked about whirligig beetles, and they are well known for speeding in wild circles over the water. And they call them bumper cars of the beetle world. They talked about brook trout, also known as speckled trout that lives in ponds, streams, creeks, small rivers, and lakes. They eat not only dragonfly larvae, but also other insects, fish, crayfish, frogs, and even small aquatic mammals like voles. They talked about painted turtles, which are named for the bright red and yellow markings on their bodies and shelves that love to bask in the sun on logs. And they talked about red-winged blackbirds that often build their nests near ponds or other wetlands and like to perch on the cattails. I hope you enjoyed our story today. I had a really great time reading it with you. You can listen to it as many times as you want because what happens with books like that, with the illustrations, is that as many times as you watch it, you'll probably find something new that you notice. So I encourage you that if you liked that story, maybe try to listen to it again later. Have a great day, first grade. Bye.